We're now finally ready to take a look at our modern model of the atom, which has a pretty technical sounding name, the quantum mechanical model of the atom. And as it says here, this is our modern view. Now, uh, for the honors courses on page 53 in your packet, you've got a framework to write some notes here as we take a look at this model. Now, um, when we last left off, our uh, model of the atom was the Bohr model. And the Bohr model said a couple things. One thing it said was that the electrons travel kind of like in orbits, like a planet orbits around the sun. They travel in those fixed energy levels. Well, the Bohr, uh, the quantum mechanical model says, well, their motion is a little more random than that. Okay, it's not just uh, totally in a fixed orbit, but the quantum mechanical model talks a lot about probabilities and regions where the electron is more likely to be found. So it's not an exact pathway that it travels like Bohr model, but it's not an entirely random motion either. And if you think about it, that's probably a lot like the motion that you or I would travel if we were to make a path of how we're traveling. We don't just follow the same single path every day, you know, go from home to school and follow the same path back and do the exact same thing the next day. Um, sometimes we deviate from that. Our path is a little bit more random than that. But our path isn't entirely random either. It's not like you have an equal chance, an equal probability of finding us out in western Pennsylvania or finding us out in Colorado as you do here at home or in our uh, West York High School here. So uh, our pathway is kind of a lot like that. It's, it's not entirely random. Uh, there are areas of high probability. And so for electrons, the regions where there's a high probability of finding a particular electron is called an orbital. And so if we think about like our orbital, like I know for me, my orbital, part of my orbital would be the school and part of my orbital would be the home, my home. And if you were to look at me in those two places, I'd say you'd probably have about a 90% chance of finding me. And that's how we officially define the space orbital. Um, so we're saying this is 90% probability of where the electron is. So it's not a pathway that it's traveling. It's a region where that electron is most likely to be found. Now, when we describe a specific electron, we have a set of quantum numbers that, they, that describe the electron. And the quantum numbers are kind of like an address. You know, if you think about delivering a package, there's several pieces of information that have to be on that package in order for the post office to know what house to deliver it to. We would need to know, for example, that it needs to go to Pennsylvania. Well, that narrows it down, but there's still lots of houses in Pennsylvania. So next we need to know, well, what city is it in? Maybe York, Pennsylvania. Well, that narrows it down even farther. And then maybe what street it's on, maybe uh, Taxville Road. And then finally, a house number. And so, um, just like an address, you know, there's no two houses that have the exact same, all four of those pieces of information that would be the same. Well, the quantum numbers is a set of information about an electron that narrows it down to one specific electron. And no two electrons have the exact same set of quantum numbers. So what are the quantum numbers and what did they tell me about the electron? Well, let's take a look. The first quantum number is called the principal quantum number which is usually abbreviated with the letter N. We saw earlier in our Bohr model where uh, our lines had said N equals 1 and N equals 2. And if you remember what that meant in the Bohr model, it meant that it referred to the energy level. Now, you might be saying, wait a minute, we just said that our quantum mechanical model doesn't use the Bohr model. Well, we still use these ideas of energy levels. But the difference is in the Bohr model, the Bohr model says the electron is traveling on this path. Whereas with the quantum mechanical model, it's more a region. And so the energy level kind of represents an average distance that the electron is from the nucleus. So an electron who's in the first energy level, on average, is very close to the nucleus. And an electron who's in the second energy level, on average, is farther away. Now that doesn't mean he's always farther because remember they're not always in their orbitals. But we use this idea of average distance 
and it still kind of explains these observations and so we kind of use this idea about energy levels so again the larger the energy level the larger the orbital is and the farther away from the nucleus the um, electron on average is so that's the first quantum number the principal quantum number so maybe I know that my electron has a principal quantum number of two so that means it's in the second energy level now I need more information to narrow it down because there's several electrons in the second energy level so the next quantum number is called the angular quantum number or sometimes it's called the orbital quantum number and what this does it tells me what type of orbital my electron is likely to be in now when we draw the boundary when we draw the orbital for where the electron is 90 percent of the time we get various different shapes and um, uh, this angular quantum number or sometimes it's called the azimuthal or the orbital tells me what type of orbital is it in and our orbitals are defined by their shapes now let's imagine that we had an electron that was buzzing around in an atom and uh, the electron was buzzing around and all of a sudden we just yelled freeze and we put a little dot where the electron was at that moment in time and then we let it go again it's buzzing around again and we yell freeze again and put another black dot let's say we did this a few thousand times well for some electrons we will get an image that looks something like this and you can see that in the center here we had a very high probability the electron was there lots of times and as we get farther away it's less and less if we were to draw a boundary you know where was this electron ninety percent of the time our boundary might be uh, drawn like this right around there and so some electrons when we draw that boundary we get a spherical shape like we see here and uh, those type of electrons we say they are in an s orbital now that's pretty easy to remember an s orbital is a sphere shaped um, so on any given energy level we can have electrons that travel in this type of a region um, but whenever we have s orbitals there's only one s orbital on each energy level um, now really it's three-dimensional so this is kind of a better three-dimensional drawing but imagine like a ball and that represents our s orbital now imagine we looked at another electron and we let it buzz around and we yelled freeze and uh, we drew another dot where that electron was well some electrons would give us a pattern like we see here and when we draw the boundary around where this electron was we get a different shape because notice there's certain areas where that electron just it wasn't you know, it just was never in this little middle section here so we have kind of a node right here and so some electrons give us this type of a shape which is often described as an hourglass shape or a dumbbell shape now since they call these p orbitals if we want to stick with the alliteration you might want to remember this as a peanut shape you know we put a little monocle and a top hat on this guy and give him a cane and he's good to go so um, this is one orbital that you're looking at now whenever we have p orbitals they always come in threes so if I've got some p orbitals on an energy level I'm always going to have three of them and that's going to be important to remember later on now as far as the the number goes we're talking about the angular momentum quantum number now if I ask you what it is you may just say either s or p but there technically are numbers that are associated with this if you want to and they really have to do with the types of nodes um, a node is a wave term and it's really kind of a a point where it doesn't vibrate or in this case a point where the electron just wasn't so p orbitals have one node and so if you do want to put a number you can put a one but if I ask you what the angular momentum quantum number is you can just say p that's fine you notice back backing this up to the s orbitals you notice that uh, the number for them is zero because they had zero nodes uh, it was a solid region there weren't any areas where they weren't to be found so that's a little extra that you really don't have to worry much about now yet other types of electrons might give us a picture that looks something like this and in this case there's really two lines of symmetry where the electron just was not to be found so there's really two nodes here and uh, so that's why we could use two as the quantum number for this guy and um, when we draw the boundary around this we get this type of a shape which a lot of people describe as a four-leaf clover or sometimes people think this looks like a flower or maybe a daisy um, if you want to stick with the alliteration because it's a d orbital uh, or maybe even you can think of it as a double peanut 
but this is one orbital that you're looking at. And if I were to ask you how many of these orbitals do we have on any given energy level, well, we had one for the S's, three for the P's, so it shouldn't surprise you that the D's have five. There's always five D orbitals on any given energy level. Finally, the last type of orbital is called an F orbital. It's a really complex shape, highly variable, so we're not even going to worry about its shape. The only thing you need to know is how many are there on an energy level, and hopefully you guessed it. We had one, three, five, and so for F orbitals, you'll always find seven on any given energy level. So now we've got it narrowed down. We know its principal quantum number maybe is on the third energy level. We maybe know it's in uh, a P orbital on the third energy level. Now we need more information. So our third quantum number is called the magnetic quantum number and basically this tells me which p orbital it's in. We said we have three p orbitals. Now the difference between the three p orbitals is the way they're oriented. Uh, if you can imagine a three-dimensional graph we might have a p orbital that's um, kinda up and down here that's oriented along the y-axis. So the magnetic quantum number for this guy would be y. In other words we would refer to this as the p sub y orbital this particular one. Um, whereas another one might be on the x-axis and in three dimensions we'd have another one coming out at us on the z-axis that would be the p sub z orbital where the z would be the magnetic quantum number. So um, that's how we name these. There is a system for naming d's but since the d's there's five of them they'd be in between so we have like the d sub x y and we're really not going to worry about that. I'm only going to really ask you about p's uh, that they're going to be either x y or z. So now I've got it narrowed down. I know that maybe is on the third energy level. Maybe principal quantum number is three. Maybe it's in a p orbital, and maybe it's in the p orbital on the x-axis. Now I need one more piece of information to narrow it down because each orbital can hold up to two electrons. That's an important one. It doesn't matter what type of orbital it is, whether it's a p orbital or a d orbital or an s orbital, you can fit a maximum of two electrons. Now, remember, since electrons are both the same charge, they're both negatively charged, they don't want to be together. They would prefer not to be in. They're going to repel each other. However, they will put up with each other as long as they're spinning in opposite directions. If they're doing that, that kind of minimizes the repulsion. Now, the way we notate a spin quantum number for these guys is we basically say it has pretty much either a positive or a negative spin. Positive and negatives, negatives are opposite of each other. So we would say that one of them has a positive spin. A lot of times they use a half or one, so we'll stick with a positive a half spin. And so we would say that the other electron is just going in the opposite direction. Well, the opposite of positive a half would be negative a half. So it's kind of arbitrary or a little bit relative as far as who we denote as who. But uh, for our purposes, we'll say that the first electron, that's our reference point. So we'll say he's got the positive a half spin and the negative, and the second one in there has a negative a half spin. So those are our four quantum numbers. If we know all four of those pieces of information, we can narrow it down to one specific electron. Okay, um, And just a last note on the positive and negative thing. Remember, that indicates the direction that it's moving. It has nothing to do with the charge. It's an electron. Electrons are negatively charged. Okay, Don't tell me you have a positive, a half charge electron. Okay, Electrons are all negative. So here's a description of an electron. So I'd like you to take a minute. You have this on your sheet and read this description and go ahead and identify the four quantum numbers for this particular electron. So you can go ahead and pause this video now and write your answers down and then play it again uh, to show you the answer. Okay, hopefully you have all of your answers written down for this question right now and uh, hopefully you got this. So uh, for the principal quantum number, that simply tells you what energy level the electron is in, and it tells us that this guy's in the fourth energy level, so the principal quantum number is four. Angular quantum number tells us what type of orbital it's in. Well, the dumbbell shape, that was the p orbital. Uh, so you could have had p there, or if you really need to put a number, because it's called a quantum number, you could put one, but p is just fine. The magnetic quantum number that tells us, well, which p orbital is it in? 
And since it tells us it's the one that's in the horizontal position, well, the x-axis is the axis that's horizontal axis. And so the magnetic quantum member for this guy would be x. And finally, it tells us it was the second electron in here. So that means we'll say it's the negative a half spin.